Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Full Devotion, First Baptist Canton this morning. I'm Pastor Kevin. It's my privilege to welcome you here and to those of you joining us online via our live stream. Uh, welcome into this time that we celebrate our connection that we have with one another and our connection we have with God. And speaking of connections, wasn't it great to connect last Sunday for our 175th anniversary? Oh, maybe I should ask that again. I didn't get a response. Wasn't it great to connect last Sunday for our 175th anniversary? Yeah. That was incredible. I, I got to tell you, just because it's kind of sad, the first service responded with the ovation of cheers. So the uh, traditional crowd really outdid themselves compared to you this morning. So you should be ashamed. <laughs> but I still love you. Grace. Grace and forgiveness. If you're a guest with us online this morning, we welcome you. You can find out more about our church at fulldevotion.org. We'd also ask that you let us know you're in the chat through our Facebook communication. And also, whether you're in-house here or online, we have a connection card. Digitally, you can find that at our website, fulldevotion.org, about us. Tab the menu says about us, and you'll also find in there our bulletin and our trumpeter, our newsletter. If you're here in the building today... The card is in front of you in the pew if you'd like to choose to use that and place it in the offering plate as you go by. And the newsletter, the trumpeter, is available. Print it for you today. Those of you who have a name on the back, pick up your copy. There's also many copies out there uh, by the welcome table uh, for you to take one with you this morning. I didn't have anybody last week ask me where the trumpeter was the Sunday before the beginning of the month. It was really Interesting, because we intentionally, purposely delayed the publication of the newsletter so that we could include all the information about the 175th celebration. So uh, as you grab a copy this morning and you open it to the middle section, you'll see many of the pictures of being together last week. You can also find these pictures online uh, at our Facebook page. So did anybody here think about not receiving their trumpeter last week? Go ahead, raise your hand. You're like, I knew. Char, you did? You're the only one out of everybody here. But we do have it for you. We do want you to have it. It is, it is something that we put uh, significant time into. Tawana, our secretary, she does a fabulous job. I, I know, uh, I recall with fondness, my mom would receive it in the mail, and she would like, you just have the most beautiful, fabulous newsletter that any church has ever produced. Uh, and I think that's true. And we owe it all to Tawana. So let's give her a big hand. Uh, this morning. Please pick up a copy, read about what happened, read about what's coming up, and uh, we want you to have that. Speaking of those things that are coming up, as I turn your attention to the bulletin this morning, uh, be aware, Tuesday night we have our hospice memorial service here. If we take away the COVID years, I think this would be our seventh year in a row uh, that we've partnered with hospice from Altman uh, to provide an opportunity for people who have lost loved ones in the last year to come in and to remember their life and to celebrate them. So I will be here Tuesday evening celebrating uh, my mom, who of course I lost in this last year. There'll be a gathering time afterwards in Danner Hall. Uh, reminder, Disc Golf Wednesday this week, for those of you that are part of that, we welcome anybody to come, uh, even if you just want to walk with us and talk. We have great conversations. We'll be at Veterans Park in Plain Township, 6.30 Wednesday, weather permitting. Uh, also, men's fishing outing for our men's breakfast, which we have on the first and third Saturdays of each month. On May 18th at 8 a.m., we'll be at Varian Orchards. They have a, a small lake or a large pond, however you look at it. Bring your own coffee, your own breakfast, your own fishing gear, your own worms. Hopefully you don't eat the worms for breakfast. That would be yucky. But uh, we're going to have a fun, free event uh, for all the guys. First time we've ever done something like this and see if we can... We can catch some fish. And then, as you look ahead, Vacation Bible School is now just around the corner. Scuba, June 10th through the 13th, each evening, 6.15 to 8.30. Now, there's three easy ways to sign up for VBS. Now, maybe before we get to signing up for VBS, we need you to help us promote VBS. You know, after uh, all the years we were able to go and send out hundreds and hundreds of flyers with those in the school, we're no longer allowed to do that. Now, our kids that are here, a part of our church, can hand uh, invitation cards to their classmates at school, and we encourage you to help your child do that. 
But more importantly than that, maybe you could take some cards and give them to neighbors that have kids or your grandkids or whoever it may be that you know that have kids because we do want to see this place filled uh, with children. And we know parents love to have two and a half, three hours every evening free from uh, their kids so they can go shopping or have dinner or do laundry or get every, whatever they need to get caught up. So please share the information about our Vacation Bible School. If there are no cards left, we will make more cards. We're easily able to do that. But once that happens, there's three easy ways to sign up for VBS. Scan the QR code. That's on the card. Go to our website, fulldevotion.org, or call the church office at our phone number listed there, and you can sign up your kids. Please do that. We have a lot of people uh, planning and getting ready to share the things uh, that will be shared with our kids. And so today, uh, we begin our prayer for our VBS Doing something a little different this year. We have prayer cards for six weeks starting today uh, through the Sunday before VBS. Today we're going to pray for our VBS and we're going to ask you to take a card if you would. You don't have to, but if you would, try to pray this prayer every day in the next week and then we'll give you another card next week. Uh, so right now, let's just pray together what's on this card and then I'll pass them out. Dear God, thank you for going before us as we prepare for VBS. Help us meet any need of supplies, decorations, volunteers that we may have. Provide the opportunity for families far and wide to attend VBS. Thank you for the opportunity to pour into the lives of these kids in deep and meaningful ways. And we pray that above all else, you are glorified in our VBS, we pray. Amen. I'm just going to split the deck here, and if you can pass these cards around and uh, hand them to the people behind you, it's okay if you have to get up, that's fine. Couple quick other items regarding VBS. You'll see on the screen in front of you, next slide please, we have a way for you to help with supplies that are needed. We see we have plastic rectangular tablecloths, crepe paper, tissue paper, all kinds of colors that we need specifically for the tablecloths and the crepe paper, and you can see that listed there. Uh, if you could in any way help us out, and maybe this is a way that you look for a tangible donation, we'll post these online at our Facebook page so that you're aware of them, uh, but you'd like a way to help contribute uh, with some items, you can do that. Also, if you'd like to help support our children that are coming to VBS, we have what's called a $5 scholarship. That $5 scholarship, as you see in the bullets in there, will provide a booklet of the Book of John, a kid adventure booklet that they get to use during the week, and then we'll be sending them home at the end of the week for those in third through sixth grade. And also, it'll help purchase a t-shirt that each VBS kid will decorate and take home. So as you head out those doors, go to your left, you'll see the big display on the wall, you'll see $5 envelopes, pick one of those up and uh, put a $5 bill in there or a $10 bill in there, whatever God leads you to give and uh, leave that in the box. Those are the announcements I'm gonna share with you this morning. I am so excited to be back together in worship. Last Sunday uh, was truly inspiring and incredible. Uh, we have a historic past. More importantly, we have a future that I believe God has prepared us for this moment to live into and to see his church grow, to be renewed. And each and every one of you, I pray, are a part of that as we're here to worship together this morning.
Father God, as we come before you today, we, uh, we lift our praises to you. We give all the glory to you, please, Lord. Just receive our worship today. You are an amazing God. And you give us so much. I look at the people on this stage around me and the amazing treasure and gift that you've given them of music and singing, playing drums. Father, I don't know how Tom does it, Lord. You didn't give me that gift, but you gave it to him. And piano to shame. Violin, another instrument nobody wants to hear me play, Lord. Linda, just the gift you've given her, and Nicole, being able to sing straight from her soul, Father, just directly to you, Lord. You've given her the gift of not only singing, but of worship. Jamie, back there, the way he works the slides and all that, Father. Yes, I'm going on about gifts right now, Father. You've given each of the people in this sanctuary a gift. The people looking online, you've given them a gift. And Father, as we come to a time when we give back to you, we are mindful of not only our monetary gifts that you've given us, but also of our, our gifts, the treasure of, of, our, of what you've given us. We're all so just fearfully made by you that we receive those gifts, Lord, and we thank you. And Father, we just ask that you uh, allow us to give cheerfully as we give, Father. And Lord, the greatest gift of all, your son Jesus, for the grace that he's given us, the amazing grace that he's given us, Father. Thank you, Jesus.
Father, we thank you for the amazing grace you've given us, Lord. Oh, Lord, you are so good, so wonderful. We praise you and we worship you. We worship who you are, your, your glory, the gloriousness that's just amazing, Father.
if all of you could be seated for just a moment, including our kids, before they head off to kids' worship, because there's one thing more that we want to do today, and that is give you a preview of our Vacation Bible School that is to come. All right, summer of 2024, here it comes. At this time, we invite our kids to be dismissed for kids' worship. Well, finally, that moment that some of you have been waiting for has arrived. We've moved on from the Gospel of John. <laughs> for the next four weeks here during the month of May, we're going to be looking together at Kingdom Treasure. Now, who here, by a show of raising their hands, has never, ever been inspired to look for treasure of some kind? That's what I thought, you know. When there is the opportunity to discover, to seek, and to uncover that which is hidden, and it's a treasure, or of its great value, most of us would say, hey, I'm in. Any National Treasure movie fans here this morning? Perhaps the first one, you know, with the Constitution, or the second one with the Book of Secrets. I know for me, when I'm flipping through the channel sometimes, and one of those movies comes on, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty usual that Mickey looks at me and says, you're watching that movie again? as one of those series of about five or a half a dozen movies that I have that, that always show up and, and they seem to capture my attention. Now, think about it. Seeking treasure, buried treasure. There's actually a reality TV show, if some of you can remember back to uh, the mid-2000s, that was based on the idea of national treasure. And that was... Uh, a series or for the season where teams of uh, three or, or teams together solved three puzzles spliced in history and completed the challenges as they traveled across the United States and into Europe 
with the ultimate goal of solving the puzzle and the grand prize when all those artifacts led to the treasure was revealed to be in the season finale three million dollars and of course that was the show treasure hunters anybody watch that anybody remember that now i want to know this morning audience participation here some feedback tell me a treasure that you have gone looking for and say it really loud so i can hear oh chris you just put us all to shame but you just you know, in the first service, that came up, but it was like five or six further on. But, and, and I don't even see Hope, so she's not here. Man, you just wait. One of us could have said that and gotten a lot more out of it. Oh, she's watching from home. Hope, did you hear that? Chris said, you are his treasure. He went searching for. Somebody else. Shoes count. <laughs> Absolutely, if you value shoes as a treasure. By the way, that answer comes from the one and only Sarah, who I want to inform with you is with us today uh, before she moves to Austin, Texas later this week for a new career path. So congratulations to you. I wasn't sure if you were going to be here today. Your dad didn't say anything about you showing up, but we're glad that you're here and we'll all get a chance to wish you well and and to pray that God goes before you and beside you in your journey. And uh, you enjoy the heat down there in Texas come uh, <laughs> mid-July. I hear for like 10 months out of the year, it's fantastic. But air conditioning, thanks for air conditioning. All right, somebody else. Shoes. Sales. Good sales. That's your treasure seeking, honey. Sports. Memorabilia, things like that. Good, good answer. Some people treasure those things. A guitar, yeah. Find a treasured guitar, one that you know you can have and play and, and hold on to that. Grandkids? Ain't nobody's lost something like your wallet or your purse. Glasses. Glasses. Who said that? Julie? They're right here. They're right there. How about keys to your car? Our son Caleb lost his keys to his car when he was at our house about a year ago, and we've looked everywhere. We never found them. It would have been so great to find those treasured keys, but we couldn't, so we had to call a, a locksmith to come and program a new key. And uh, We really think that he went somewhere with his brother or sister and got out of the car with them, and the keys fell into a parking lot somewhere or something. Never could find those keys that were treasured. My brother in high school lost his girlfriend's high school ring. Ooh, that's something you would want to find, right? If I could find that treasured ring. Well, in fact, believe it or not, like six months later, in the dead of winter, a guy found her ring in the intersection of the street near our house. We were two houses down from the intersection. And he came and knocked on our door and said, did you happen to lose a ring? True story. And I think my brother was glad he was able to give it back to her. They never married, but... Uh, that would be tough. Anybody else got something? I want to tell you a story of a treasure that I went looking for as a kid, didn't even know what I was going to find. My mom's cousin inherited or purchased, acquired a farm when I was a kid. And as he acquired this farm, they had built a brand new metal barn, shiny, beautiful looking barn. But next to it was one of those rickety old barns that you see when you're driving down the country road. It looks like it's about ready to fall apart. Well, it wasn't quite there yet because it was safe enough for us to, to go in. And my brother Ann and I remember, this is probably like 1978, 79, somewhere like that. We're like, hey, let's see if we can go into the barn and see if we can find anything of value, something that we could treasure. And of course, as young kids, it didn't have to be something of tremendous value, just something that we thought was pretty cool. And so we're searching through this barn. It had like an old vintage car, I think from the 60s. Tires are flat, covered in dirt and dust. Uh, and then we stumbled on to this little trunk or container, and we're like pulling stuff back, pieces of wood or whatever that's there, so that we could open it. Now, I know for some of you, this is going to have no uh, value 
or reference to. But for many of us, we remember what a 45 single on the record player looked like and sounded like, correct? And we found in that trunk probably like 150 45s from like the 1950s and 60s and early 70s. Some of them were broken, uh, but many of them weren't. I know we had at home on my dad's record player, Hang On Sloopy on a 45, you know that great Ohio State song. So we were able to go through the trunk and look at all these different uh, records and see if we could recognize some of the tunes, most of them which I had no idea what they were. Uh, but it was a fun experience where we felt like we found buried treasure and, and asked my, uh, my mom's cousin if we could keep some of those. And he said, of course. He said, I, if you want to have them, you can have them. You think about it, the joy of finding treasure, whatever it may be, is often temporal. It's just temporary. Even the treasure itself might lose its significance to you, or even its value as life changes. And some of those shoes, yes, Sarah has now thrown away, because they no longer have any value to her. She wore them out. You see what I'm saying this morning? I want us to look at, in this series that we're calling Kingdom Treasure, treasure that does not lose its value, treasure that will last for eternity. I mean, we think about the questions, what is the kingdom of heaven? Where can it be found? Who has access to it? And during this series, we might just find the keys that unlock the kingdom treasure. Throughout these next few weeks, uh, we're going to explore four parables that Jesus tells uh, in the, recorded in the gospel about the kingdom of God. And uh, that is one that is buried beneath the ground when it's found. Its value is beyond compare. And yes, that treasure may look small or insignificant, but it's worth the time and the effort to discover it. We'll see that the kingdom is like a yeast that permeates all the dough. It's a, a universal presence. We'll see the kingdom is like a seed that begins small but grows exponentially. And we'll also see that, lastly, the kingdom is like a net that catches all kinds of fish. So each story we look at, it's going to be like a, an understanding of this newly discovered treasure that reveals the, the novel and the exciting truths about what you and I are invited to be a part of as followers of Jesus. And I know this, whenever we find something of great value, whenever we experience something that is meaningful and we would consider we treasure whatever it is, we want to share that with other people. We absolutely always want to share it with others. The gold rush in California was what year? 1849, when gold was found by James Marshall at Sutter's Mill in California. And throughout 1849, thousands and thousands of people from around the United States, mostly men, with gold fever borrowed money, mortgaged their property, or spent their life savings to make that arduous journey to California, so much that it's considered almost 300,000 people were a part of the gold rush. Think about it. In pursuit of the kind of wealth that they only dreamed of, very few made it rich. Most we're fortunate enough to find enough gold that they could buy a meal and be able to eat. Crime was rampant. And I found this statistic really, truly mind-blowing. One in 12 of the 49ers who experienced the gold rush, gold rush perished. Think about that. Almost 10% of the people that went seeking for gold died in the pursuit of that treasure. I think if we could ask them today, people that were part of the gold rush and those that obviously died, if we could ask them before they died, do you think it was worth it? The price that you had to pay? I wonder, don't you, how many would actually have said yes? Because most of them, I lost everything. In the pursuit of something that was only going to be temporary. This morning, our theme or our thought in Kingdom Treasure is worth any price. 
You know, it's amazing to me what people will do for things that they see as having great worth. I mean, people work hard to build up large bank accounts so that they can purchase whatever it is they want to purchase. People save for years to buy an expensive car. A, a young man will work his fingers to the bone and, and pick up whatever extra jobs he could possibly pick up so that he will be able to buy an engagement ring for his girlfriend. Because if we think something is valuable, we'll do anything for it. In a world where value is usually defined by how much something costs, today I want us to visit a story in the Bible that will cause us to rethink what is worthy of our time, our energy, and our sacrifice. Because here's what I learned in my lifetime, and I know many of you have learned this as well. I know anything worth having is absolutely worth my time, my energy, and my sacrifice. In your notes as we go along today, and I encourage you to use those, you'll see at the top, to fully obtain the kingdom of God will cost us. It's going to cost us. Now, it doesn't cost us anything to re receive salvation. Understand that clearly as we go through here. Salvation is a free gift of God through Jesus Christ. There's nothing we can do to buy it, nothing we can do to earn it. But to fully obtain what we're going to learn in this series about the kingdom of God, the eternal kingdom of God, I believe absolutely will cost us. So number one, it's time to rethink. What is most valuable? Every one of us here this morning, what is most valuable to me? In the book of Matthew, Jesus is speaking to a large group of people. He's teaching them about the kingdom of God, eternal things. This is the place where we know God rules and reigns forever and ever. And it is a reality that was becoming more and more clear as Jesus was at work in the world. And so Jesus uses this powerful image to get his point across, to teach this life-changing truth. And he says in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 13, verse 44, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. Hidden in a field. It's a buried treasure. You can't see it. But when a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, he went and sold all he had and bought that field so that he would have access to that treasure. Jesus tells this parable to those who are listening. Now, be reminded, if you're not sure what a parable is, a parable is a story designed to teach us a meaningful lesson or to teach us a valuable truth. And in this story, we see this man who stumbles upon this buried treasure. Now, think about it. What would you do? Pretend right now, maybe open your hand, your palm, and say, you have a very valuable coin that somehow you've stumbled upon or it's been given to you. It's a very rare coin. It goes back uh, thousands of years, uh, and it's worth who knows how much money. I think you would do anything to make sure you held on to that coin because it's going to be yours. You don't have to give it back to anybody. Well, that's what's happened here in this story is, is basically this man has stumbled upon something so valuable, we don't know how long it's been there, we don't know how it got there, we don't even know exactly how the man found it, but in his excitement of the discovery, he hides it again to make sure that nobody else can get it. And then he sells everything he can so he can buy the field that the treasure is in. This valuable treasure, so valuable that he what? Gives up everything to have it. Jesus says, this is what the kingdom of God is like. This is the treasure. See, Jesus believes that the connection, living in connection to God the Almighty, under his rule, under his reign, is worth any kind of sacrifice it may cost us. There are a few different places in Scripture where Jesus teaches us that living the Christian life will cost us something. Perhaps being a Christian will or already has caused you relationships with other people. 
because of your convictions, because of your belief, because of your trust of the scriptures and the truth of the scripture, you've lost a relationship with somebody else who believes you're kind of crazy, you know, believing this ancient text. <coughs> you've bought in to the hype of religion, and you may have lost a relationship because of that. Maybe it'll cost you in the workplace because of your values and what you believe to be true. You won't stoop to the level that some other people are willing to stoop to because you believe that honesty, truthfulness is more important in the workplace. It may cost you worldly pleasures such as prosperity, pros uh, financial prosperity, personal freedom, or even your own selfish desires. You see, Jesus wants us to understand. He wants us to know today that no matter what it may cost us to follow God, it is worth it. Amen? It's worth it. The reality is a lot of the things that we chase after in this life that we see value in, in the end, they aren't that valuable. They're not worth anything. Think back to the gold rush. As I said, there were those who hit the mother load. And yes, it changed the tra trajectory of their family's life forever, altogether, here on this earth. But others came all the way west. They sacrificed everything, and what they found was something called fool's gold. Its official name is pyrite. Pyrite, or iron sulfide, is one of the most common minerals abounding. It's a worthless stone that looks a lot like gold. And often those who found it thought they had found gold. They look so similar, but they're completely opposite in value. One is a true treasure. The other is worthless. Nothing but a shiny rock. You know, there's so many people in this life that live each day working for the things that, in the end, are worthless. So let me tell you this morning, don't fall for fool's gold. It's our second point. Don't fall for fool's gold. Don't fall for the things of this world that, that you think have such value that you'll give up everything to obtain them. Think about, for a moment, where does the majority of your time and your energy and your attention go? Where does it go? Does it go toward the things that are temporal or the things that are eternal? Do your efforts go toward earthly things or kingdom opportunities? And one good way to tell if the treasure that you're investing in is, is kingdom-oriented is to ask yourself, what will come of my investment when my life is done? Whatever it is, what will come of that investment when your life is done? Because popularity will fade. Cars will rust. Homes will rot and decay. Bank accounts will be spent. Businesses will fail. But on the other hand, if we look at investing in the lives of people, we're going to make a real difference in someone's soul. If we're investing in something that lasts forever and we're sharing with people the love of God and how important the treasure in a relationship with Jesus Christ that we've found, if we're sharing that, it's not only going to bring them joy that will last for all eternity, it's also going to help us deepen in the relationship that we have with one another for all of eternity, always investing in, in uh, character and integrity and the things that will pay dividends now in the kingdom of God. It's a kingdom treasure, and it's worth whatever it will cost us to have. I think of the hymn, uh, I'd Rather Have Jesus. How many of you know that hymn? Some of you raise your hand. It's one of the uh, older, beloved songs of our faith. But, you know, just simply the first verse, it, it goes like this. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. 
I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or land. I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hand than to be the king of a vast domain and be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything the world affords today. I mean, could we say that? I'd rather have Jesus than anything else. Well, there's another story that's told in the Gospels about a rich man who encounters Jesus. And he asks him a very important question. It's Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 22. This man wants to know, how do I inherit eternal life? He's looking for the treasure that is the kingdom of God. And he wants to know, how do I discover it for him, for myself, himself? We read, Jesus started on his way. The man ran up to him, fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. The man says to Jesus, teacher, he declared all these things I have kept since I was a boy. He's kept all the commandments. I don't know. I don't know too many boys that don't have a problem once in a while with dishonoring their father and mother. But he says he's kept them all. Jesus looked at him and he loved him. Don't miss that. He loved him. And he says, one thing you lack. You think you've done all these things. You think you're in the, the best position that you could possibly be right now in your life. You've lived all those laws since you were a boy, but you're still missing something. He said, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor, and you will have what? Treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. And this is where it turns incredibly tragic. Because at this, the man's face fell. He went away, sad, because he had great wealth. When asked about how to take part in God's kingdom, Jesus tells him what he already knew about the man because he was God in the flesh. He says, I know you think you've arrived and you've been obedient, but you're missing one thing. And he touches him in a sore spot. And Jesus often does that. God does that to us. He gets us right where he knows we're struggling with something. There's still one weakness that you have, young man. You love your stuff more than you love God. Hmm. Could that be said of us? And then it's revealed that Jesus asked him to do what? Sell everything to follow him. And the man can't do it. I can't give that stuff up. Why not? It's only temporary. <laughs> it's not going to last forever. No, I can't give those things up. You see, there's, there's this, there's this sacrifice, sacrificial element to living under the rule and the reign of God in our lives. Even here in this earth, that this is, this is part of who we are in God's kingdom. And some people are not willing to give. For this man, the treasure here on earth was far more valuable than treasure in heaven. Another thing you notice here in this passage is that Jesus does not negotiate with this man. <laughs> Jesus doesn't grab him by the arm and say, okay, you know what, maybe I'll lower the standard for you. I'll soften the blow. No. You see, Jesus understood what was hindering this man from living into the fullness of the kingdom of God. He knows that about us too. What's hindering us this morning from living into the fullness of the kingdom of God? What God has intended for you. Jesus understood his stuff, his money, his treasure here on earth was holding him back, was tripping him up. But the man refuses to see it. 
Instead, he chose riches that he desired, and he misses out on the kingdom life. There are some that look at this passage of scripture of the man selling everything uh, for the hidden treasure as what Jesus has done for us. He sacrificed everything for a buried hidden treasure that is you and I. He came to earth. He died on a cross. He let everybody know who he was and what he was doing in that time frame so that people could understand he was the Messiah. And then he ascended into heaven and it's almost like that that truth or that treasure continues to get buried more and more as we move on into the future. And so much that, that today, and I just heard this statistic this week, those who grew up, those who grow up in the church now at this point in, in history have less than a 45% chance of remaining in the church as an adult. And those who don't grow up in the church have less than a 25% chance of ever being a part of God's family. That's the mission that we have. That's the opportunity that we have. Because here's what I want you to know this morning. Third point, you are worth any sacrifice. That's what Jesus would say. You are worth any sacrifice. Though the kingdom of God is a treasure that is worth any sacrifice, the sacrifice that was made available to us by Jesus Christ is an even greater sacrifice. Amen? The cross of Jesus, his sacrifice, his death, in which we'll celebrate here in just a moment as we reflect on the treasure of communion. For in Mark's gospel, we read in chapter 10, verse 45, the Son of Man did not come to be served. He could have been. He was king. He was God. He deserved to be served. But no, he served... He gave his life, he sacrificed his life as a ransom for many, and I would say replace that many with everyone. He gave his life as a ransom for everyone. There's only only one problem with that, is not everyone is going to accept the treasure of the kingdom of heaven. You know, every year in Alaska, they do this thing called the thousand mile dog sled race, the Iditarod. Any of you know of that? Maybe you don't know the, the history of it. I mean, today they run it for prize money and the prestige, and, and all of that actually commemorates an original race run to save lives. It's way back in January 1926. There was a six-year-old boy named Richard Stanley who showed signs of diphtheria, signaling the possibility of an outbreak in that small town of Nome, Alaska, When the boy passed away a day later, Dr. Curtis Welch began immunizing children and adults with an experimental but very effective anti-diphtheria serum. But it wasn't long before Dr. Welch's supply ran out. And the nearest serum was a thousand miles away. A thousand miles through frozen wilderness to, what is it, Nenea, Alaska? And amazingly, what happened is there's these group of trappers, these these group of prospectors who volunteered to cover the distance with their teams of dog sleds and operating in relays from one trading post to trapping station to another trading station and beyond. And one sled started out from one side and the other started out from the other side. And get this, after 144 hours in minus 50 degree winds, they met in the middle, and the serum was then delivered to Nome. And as a result, only one other life was lost in that community. Could have been a potential epidemic. But their sacrifice had given an entire town the gift of life. Pretty incredible. Ultimately, the price we pay to follow God pales in comparison to the price that was paid for us to receive the gift of eternal life. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ loved each and every one of you so much that he was willing to offer up his very life on a cross to rescue you from your sin. And just like that Herculean effort given in the Alaska tundra to save lives, Jesus carried the cross 
and the entire sins of the world was upon his shoulders. You know, when you and I come to realize the sacrifice that was made for me, for you, for us, then we come to realize, when we truly understand that, we come to realize that the temporal is not worth trading the temporary for the eternal. It's just not worth it. For the here and now, it's not worth it. And there are those who will say, well, I want to enjoy this life, and I want to do the things I want to do here in this life because it's the only life I get, but don't waste it. Don't trade the earthly for the divine. Don't trade the imperishable for that which is perishable. That when the end of your life is over, it's all gone. The kingdom treasure worth any price that we have discovered is what God calls us to share with others. We're rooted in Christ. We're inspired to love. And in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2, Paul talks about that. He says to the church, he says to us today, walk in the way of love. You know, you hear me remind you this of all the time. We're, we're to love others the way that God has loved us. Walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. That's our mission. We represent Christ we reach people for Christ. We raise people up in Christ. Because we have discovered this treasure that was buried that is so valuable that it's worth any cost. The question this morning I leave you with is what is keeping you from the kingdom life? And are you willing to give it up? Father, as we pray together here this morning, as we prepare to gather around your table for communion, Lord, I pray for those living on the edge. I pray for those that might be in fear of the future. And they're caught between the, the value of this life and the value of that life which is to come, which is eternal. And I pray, Lord, give us all, give everyone a deepening sense of hope and trust in you. Lord, we pray for those caught up in the ways of this world, relying on worldly treasures, Give them an understanding that, that this is a blessing of release and joy in you. I mean, Lord, we pray for all of those who need you. Lord, we pray for the responsibility that I have of leading your flock and, and, and we have of leading others to be a part of this flock. Strengthen us with, with your blessing of, of wisdom and understanding. Lord, watch us and protect over us. Strengthen all who are in need of an unshakable trust in you that they will not lose the joy of finding you. They won't get caught up in seeking the treasures of this world. Father, maybe in this moment we could just get a glimpse of the treasure that is ours when we put our hope and trust in you. That there's someone here this morning that's never done that. They've never said, God, I, I turn my life over to you. I ask you to forgive me. I want to seek this kingdom treasure. Seek first his kingdom, his righteousness. And the scripture says everything else will be given to you. Everything else will fall into place. And really, one of the reasons that happens is because our perspective changes. Our focus changes. And we're focused on what is most important and we're focused on that which is eternal and not just temporary. Father, if there's someone here this morning, I pray that they would put their hope and their trust in you. Lord, during this month, help us to understand what is most important, what is most valuable. Maybe there's a young person here, even now, that's caught up in the things of this world and thinking, you know, I don't know if this Bible-believing faith that my parents have that that I've been searching for in my life is real. God, I pray that you would reveal to them that it is absolutely real. Each and every one of us would do our due diligence to study the scriptures and to study history. 
and to know that the things that are luring us away from Jesus are simply not worth it. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his very own soul? We come to a time of communion this morning. A time where we have a symbol of the treasure that God has given us. It's a symbol of the bread and the cup. Jesus shared it with his disciples before he went to the cross. He said, the bread's going to be a symbol of my body which will be broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And then he said, the cup juice, the wine at the time was a symbol of his blood, the new covenant which would be shed for us. It's an incredibly beautiful treasure that's symbolized. And he invited them to eat of it, symbolizing that we have God's spirit living within us. Uh, we, we have this treasure inside of us, jars of clay filled with a treasure that we're supposed to share with the rest of the world so often I know I keep it to myself I fail to look for those people to share what I know would be of most value to me my relationship with God Father we pray in this moment that we're gathered for worship this morning that you would reveal to each and every one of us how wonderful this treasure is forgive us Father for those times where we value other things over our relationship with you we get caught up in the things of this world. We don't seek you first. We seek the, the things of this earth rather than the things of God. We know it's a challenge because our humanness is often challenged. Satan makes a lot of things look really enticing. But that question, once again, at the end of your life, what will be left? The things that you have invested in in this life that will fade away, rust and moth decay, or the things that will be eternal, your relationship with God, other people's eternal souls that you want us to focus on. If you're here this morning and you're a member of God's family, you've accepted his free gift of salvation, I invite you to partake in communion with us. If you haven't done that yet, love to have that conversation with you. We believe it's important, it's significant that you have a relationship with Christ if you're going to partake of the bread and the cup. And if, if you don't and you do so, that's a sin against God as well. Father, forgive us for our shortcomings. Forgive us for our faults. Forgive us when our focus is upside down. Don't allow us to fall for fool's gold but to only focus on that which is of true value and true worth. We ask your blessing now upon this cup, this bread that we share together. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you all to make your way down the center aisle and to pick up the bread and the cup in this prepackaged container. Return to your seats and I'll direct you all to take it together just a few moments. So please come.
As a reminder, turn the cup upside down. You want to make sure you do that to peel back the seal where you'll find the unleavened piece of bread in which Jesus shared with his disciples and said, take and eat of my body. And after that, as you peel back from the layer to the juice, Jesus gave us this beautiful symbolism of the treasure of his blood that was shed for the sacrifice of our sins. Though they be as red as scarlet, they be washed white as snow. Take and drink. It's an incredible picture of beautiful treasure that God has given us. As his adopted children, we inherit everything the Son gets. We get as well. Jesus said, for as often as you partake of the bread and drink of the cup, you do remember his death until he comes again. Let us remember, let us celebrate these important moments that we have together. Thank you for being here. We will see you next week.